If you're ready to build your Raleigh bike, here are the step-by-step -step instructions to get you on your way. As you open the box, you'll see there are just four steps to get you riding. If you've never built a bike before, this may take you up to 60 minutes. If you're handy with tools, probably around 40 to 50 minutes. If you have wrenched a little before but never fully built a bike, expect about 30 to 40 minutes. And if you're an expert bike mechanic, you'll probably be riding in 10 minutes. Start by making sure you have everything out of the box, including the small parts and tools box and the seat post with the saddle attached. Take all of the packing materials off the bike and be sure to save it along with the box. I have found that keeping the box and padding is really useful when I need to ship my bike. Now turn the fork forward, making sure the cables aren't twisted around the frame and hang the fork over the edge of the bike box. Remove the four screws holding the faceplate on, then center your handlebars on the stem. The cables should cleanly cross in front of the bike. Begin threading the bolts back onto the faceplate by hand, then adjust your bar so the brake levers sit at a 45 degree angle. Do the final tightening of the bolts with an Allen wrench and tighten in a crossing pattern, checking to make sure the bolts are equally tightened. The wrench should leave an imprint on your palm when they are tight enough, and there should also be an equal gap on the top and bottom. Next, open the quick release and slide the seat tube in. Make sure to install past the minimum insertion line and close the quick release. Before you install the front wheel, pinch the two brake arms towards each other with one hand. Grab the silver brake noodle with the other hand and slip it out of the hinged arm. Look for a direction arrow on the side of the tire to orient it the right way. To install your front wheel, it will probably be easiest to turn your bike upside down. Next, take the plastic fork block out of the dropouts, put the front wheel in the fork, and slide the quick release through the hub with one conical spring on each side. Thread the nut onto the other side and begin to tighten. When you close the lever, it should tuck up near the fork leg, and when it's tight enough, the lever will leave an imprint on your palm. If you're unfamiliar with how to reattach V-brakes, simply grasp the silver brake noodle with one hand and the hinged arm with the other. Guide the brake noodle into the slot of the hinged arm, making sure it seats all the way in. Slide the dust cover over and test the brake to make sure the pads are connecting to the rim only. Your pedals are right and left specific, so make sure you have the correct one for each side. The pedals are marked with an R and L stickers, and some have R and L stamped on the end of the pedal spindle. To install, the right pedal goes on the same side of the bike as the chain and threads in clockwise, whereas the left pedal goes on the side without the chain and threads in counterclockwise. Thread them in carefully and give them a final tightening with a pedal wrench. Before you hit the trails, do a quick pre-ride check to make sure your bike is in working order. Do a bolt check on critical areas like the stem and handlebars to make sure the bolts are still tight. Don't over tighten them, just check to make sure they aren't loose. Next, double check your quick releases. Then try to spin your handlebars side to side while holding the front wheel still and see if you can rotate the bars up or down too. Now check both brakes. Pull one brake lever at a time and rock your bike back and forth about five times. Then give the wheels a spin. There shouldn't be any rubbing of the brakes. On the sidewall of the tire, there is a suggested pressure rating. Keeping the correct PSI will lower your chances of getting a flat and will make your ride more efficient. Now check your saddle for the correct height. You'll want the top of the saddle to be two to three inches below your hip. It's a good idea to try to wiggle the saddle side to side. If it doesn't move, it's tight enough. 